Hello, and welcome to the April edition of Network on Television. I'm Sharon Bennett. And I'm Mike McClure from Residential Energy Management Services. Mike, you've been doing some acting and freelance video appearances lately, right? Yes, I have. In addition to my normal utility work. Well, we're lucky to have your talents with us for NTV. It's great to be back. We're outside the North Service Center where it's a little windy, but spring is coming into bloom with beautiful rhododendrons and cherry trees kept spruced up by City Lights Vegetation Management staff. Keeping our surroundings pleasant for our customers and safe for our workforce involves many of us at the utility. During the month of April, spring cleanups and Earth Day celebrations take place. But the focus on the environment is continuous for Seattle City Lights. Rather than respond to environmental problems after they occur, today's pollution prevention program makes our workplace as free as possible from environmental hazards. The Hazardous Waste Unit at the South Service Center takes its job seriously and along with the Environmental Health and Safety Division is constantly looking for ways to reduce, reuse, and recycle. State legislation passed in 1990 requires all large generators of hazardous waste to have a pollution prevention program. City Lights plans include building this new structure to more efficiently handle transfer of hazardous wastes at the South Service Center, finding new ways to reuse treated wood in old utility poles, or have the chemicals removed and wood broken down into usable mulch. Currently, 87% of the regulated hazardous waste the utility generates is from these old poles and cross arms. In the paint shop, they're testing a laundering and reuse process to deal with contaminated rags rather than dispose of them as hazardous waste. Carrying out our pollution prevention program will really um, provide a lot of advantages to City Lights. Um, probably the, the first and foremost thing in people's minds nowadays is saving money. We, we realize that we can save a lot of money by um, cutting down on the amount of waste we generate, looking at other ways of doing things. Uh, as time goes on, uh, waste disposal is becoming more and more regulated, it's becoming more expensive, more things are becoming taxed and, and uh, regulated. Um, another advantage is employee safety, because whenever you shift to using less hazardous products, you're not only helping the environment, you're also making it uh, a less hazardous environment for you to be working in. And uh, lastly, we, we will be saving quite a bit of money by recycling and cutting down on the amount of materials we use and the waste we generate. Using less hazardous substitutes and changing the way products are purchased, tracked, and disposed of could reduce City Light's hazardous waste load from 452,000 pounds to 18,000 pounds by 1997. The Pollution Prevention Program involves all of us, and two City Light employees recently came up with slogans to emphasize pollution prevention. Preparation prevents pollution. Wow, isn't that a mouthful? Make light, not flight. Spring brings the second year of training camp to crews at the South Service Center. 250 employees spent three and a half days in training, reviewing all of their safety essentials. The training camp schedule saves time and lost labor by consolidating training over a two-week period. And a major project is underway in the machine shop at the South Service Center. They're pouring metal to build Babbitt shoes for the Gorge Powerhouse Generator. When installed, the shoes hold the weight of the generator and turbine. Making them here saves two to three times the cost of buying them from an outside supplier. The process ensures good quality. If they fail, the cost of tearing out and reassembling these critical components can be exorbitant. The shoes are made of molten Babbitt, a strong tin and copper alloy with high load carrying capacity. Also in the works at the machine shop are guide bearings for the Diablo Powerhouse C build. We're still keeping track of water conditions and the effect of snow accumulations at Skagit and Boundary on City Lights operations, revenue, and rates. There's substantial improvement in the Skagit snowpack this month, but the Ponderay Basin hasn't had much winter precipitation. Formulation of what kind of surcharge is needed to make up for revenue shortfall is being determined as we assemble this issue of NTV. As always, we'll keep you updated each month. We're always on the lookout for new NTV features, so if you or anyone you work with is involved in an outstanding volunteer activity that lends itself to pictures for NTV or information for network, please let us know. 
The same goes for your city light work, too. We're interested in different projects other city lighters will want to know about. Call 684-3008 with your NTV story ideas. Many of us celebrated April Fools this month with good-natured pranks and practical jokes. The peaceful atmosphere at Boundary is far from the hustle and bustle of city living. Each season of the year has its own unique <laughs> beauty. <laughs> Although things are quiet at the moment, City Light stands ready to enter storm season again all too soon. We're gearing up to deal with outages and power flip-flops. Outages and... <laughs> okay, let's do it. Well, we're ready to turn our attention back to exercise here at the health uh, Power. powerhouse again. Ah! Okay. Quit it. Three, two, one. We've also just revised our brochure called What to Do When the Power Goes Out. If you'd like a copy, call 684-3112. I hear there's a public service announcement appearing on national television that helps customers deal with outage preparedness, and it won a national award. Right, Ed. The City Hall Digest, which rewards city government for innovation, but it's not airing on national television. It's airing on local television. <laughs> I knew that. have to say local television either. I hear there's an announcement appearing on local television dealing with customer preparedness, outage preparedness, not customer, outage preparedness. I understand that there's a, <laughs> I think I better go take a ride for a minute. Many of us celebrated something this month. Oh! Uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, some of you suggested showing some NTV bloopers for April Fool's, so those were a few of my favorites. Well, bloopers notwithstanding. We're all role models for children who see us in our personal lives and around our neighborhoods. But recently, some City Light employees shared what they do on the job with 8th graders at Washington Middle School. Superintendent Roberta Palm Bradley, Junior Level Line Worker Nettie Dokes, crew members Don Behrens, Sherman Williams, Melissa Snell, and Ann Kuhn teach the science class about pursuing their interests and the careers it might lead to, including an apprentice, level line worker or superintendent of the utility. They explain the city light system, electrical safety, what a line crew does, and the clothes and equipment they use on the job. Something else to celebrate this spring are those of you who were promoted during the last year. The promotion ceremonies were held in March to recognize